Hey guys, welcome back. So uh, this week, more welding, and um, we're going to compare some welds. We will be comparing pulse, uh, rule of threes, and manual pulse. So n right now we're starting out with uh, pulse dip, which is uh, just like a standard pulse. And on the high end, I'm tipping the rod in. So I had been doing this for a while, and um, I'm still uh, need a lot of practice at it, but I'm not anywhere near as bad as I was before. One of the parts that I need to work on is when I come over the hump like I am right now, and coming down the other end of the tube, is uh, repositioning the filler rod so that I'm not at you know like a 90 degree angle. You'll see I just repositioned it then, but I did it kind of badly and took the rod out of the argon. Uh, the other thing is I'm not repositioning my torch angle as well. And uh, I gotta say it's really tricky like coming around the tube and uh, kind of slowly turning your torch angle. Uh, habit I keep getting into is I start welding and I just lock my wrist and uh, that means I'm not kind of turning it around the tube like I should be. Alright, the finished weld and we got some good spots, some bad spots, and we're coming around to the part where I took the filler rod out and then dipped it back in, it wasn't shielded, and there it is, that gold junk right there. Alright, some rule of threes. It's kind of taking me a while to get the puddle formed. One thing I kept doing is balling up the filler rod, and um, yeah, when when you see the finished weld, you'll see these big lumps because that's where the, the, that big ball of stuff just kind of dropped onto the weld. I have the most trouble with the sides of the tubes, and I think it's because the uh, two surfaces are pretty flat together. And also because uh, where the tube is mitered, there's this little lip edge. And as you're welding, it sometimes starts melting away. And it can get a little tricky. So yeah, my first weld on the side is always the worst. And then the second one uh, usually comes out a little better. And now for my favorite spot, which is in the corner. I just find this to be way easier than the sides. And I think that's because the sides has that mitered edge, which melts away sometimes unpredictably. And uh, yep, in the corner none of that stuff happens. As long as you get your torch in there close enough, you're usually pretty good. I just paused a lot just then. But regardless, it came out okay. And here is the finished rule of threes weld. Again, some okay spots, some not so okay spots. Alright, so now I am manual pulsing. I was getting the rod stuck in there, you could see. But uh, the interesting thing about manually pulsing is uh, you make your own pace, and if you, for example, like I just did, get the rod stuck, you can kind of unstick it and then continue on pulsing. 
Whereas if, if this was um, standard pulse, uh, that pulsar is just going its own pace. And if you get it stuck, you gotta like wait for the next round of pulse. So uh, that's what I really like about manually pulsing, and it just feels really natural to me. Okay, so on this tube, I am being more uh, aware of my filler rod angle, and as I come around the top, uh, my angle is a lot better than before. And I managed to kind of reposition without taking it out of the shielding. However, uh, when I finished, I turned the torch uh, kind of back on the tube a bit to shield it, and when I did, that's how I got that marshmallow burned area on the left. So last week, I thanked Alistair of Duncan Cycles for recommending the Shade 9 gold-plated hood filter. And uh, yeah, this week, I'd like to thank you again, Alistair, for suggesting I try out uh, Manual Pulse. I gotta say, I really like it, and I do think there's something to this, and I'm gonna continue trying to uh, improve my technique with this. Alright, so here is a shot of the foot pedal and pulsing. And one thing I'm doing that I do need to improve on is I'm, I'm actually not letting off the foot pedal enough. So my low end of amperage I think is too high. And uh, I'm running kind of hot and I could be going faster. So uh, here's the finished manual pulse weld. And uh, it's not too bad uh, for first try. but definitely room for improvement. This is Adobe Premiere and this is the software I use to edit my videos. So the reason I'm showing you guys this is I noticed something interesting while I was editing. So you can see I just highlighted that clip and that first clip is um, the pulse dip method. And it is about a minute long which means I am pulse dipping for about one whole minute. And then uh, the next video, the next clip uh, that I select, it is the rule of threes method. And that's shorter by 20 seconds than pulse dip. Uh, and then finally we have the manual pulse method, which is roughly the same length as the rule of threes. So what this tells me is that if I'm going to continue to use pulse dip method, I'm going to need to speed up my travel speed. Okay, here are the results. We have the one pulse per second method, the rule of threes method, and manual pulse. And um, yeah, so I think manual pulse looks pretty good for the first try, and almost uh, equal to the other two. And that was the first try, so I think after uh, more practice, I think I could get that to look a lot better. And uh, my preference is manual pulse uh, because it just feels more natural to me and I, I like having like full control over everything. Uh, but that is just an opinion, it is my opinion, and I suggest that if you um, are trying to choose a method, just try them all out and see what you like best and go with it, just keep practicing. Okay, that's it for this week and next week. Dun dun dun. I actually start working on the real bicycle frame. Like for real. I know. It's hard to believe. But it's happening. So join me for that and um, if you haven't already, please subscribe. And I'll see you guys later.